hello and welcome everybody today we are going to see how we can use react hook form with material ui uh, we all know that react hook form is a great library for handling form inputs in react in their website they uh, promise us less code more performance and it's actually true we can gain a huge performance boost for our applications and it also reduces the amount of code that we are going to write for handling our form inputs and as we know that form inputs are one of the most common use cases for any react.js application however uh, in in their website they have a small demo how you can use that but uh, in real life applications we uh, don't usually use direct inputs like this we usually uh, use some kind of design library for example material UI and design this type of uh, libraries but react hook form can be used directly with these libraries however they have provided us with a special wrapper component that is called controller and we can use that controller component to integrate with the material UI form inputs today we will see we will create a demo form let me first show you what we are going to build here will create a form that will have all the basic inputs components that we need to use in our uh, in any react.js application text input radio drop down date checkbox slider these are uh, some of the examples that i am going to show how you can do it all of the codes can be found in this github repository i will link it in the description below let's get started so here we have a react.js typescript project this project is created with create react app and uh, here is our form component so if we put all of the form components inside one large form it will get very very messy so it is a good practice to create individual components for handling our form inputs and reuse them for any kind of form so let's first see how we can use text inputs of material ui with our react hook form so here you can see let me zoom in a little bit okay so this is our form input text uh, this controller is imported from react hook form this is the controller or the wrapper component that i was talking about uh, this uh, this uses render props and this controller then handles all the underlying functionalities of react hook form under the hood for us so we extract out this control from the use form context this use form context also uh, exported from react hook form we know that this control is a function when we use react hook form it exports us a control function we can pass it to our desired component input or we can get it from the uh, context here so details about this uh, I'm not going into too much details but the main idea is we need a control component control uh, property so either you can pass down it from the parent component or, or get it from here so I like it like this style because it is very clean the less uh, amount of props is better okay so we pass down two props here one is name and another one is label so as we are passing down these to come to props so this input text becomes now reusable so we can use for example in our form demo here you can see that I have used this input text if I want to use another input text I just change the name and the label and that's it so it will give me the text value too so this is very easy and from in our in input text we pass the name control and in the render there are three fields one is field one is field state one is form state so there are many functions inside each of this but we are not going to use all of them the first one is field we extract out two properties from this one is on change and value and this text field component is actually coming from our material UI. so here you can see that it is coming from 
material UI. So you can understand we are showing this example with material UI, but you can use this with any design library. You, it is ant design or semantic UI, it doesn't matter because all of those input components will ha have these two properties on change and value. And you just pass it here and that's it. So the controller to summarize the whole thing, we get the controller component. The controller component wraps have a have a uh, render function and this render function renders that our desired input and in this input we pass these two fields on change and value and the rest is handled automatically so here are some extra things like uh, size variant level these are material UI specific things I won't go into the details this is our input text now let's see how we can use radio buttons so we know that radio buttons, uh, these radio buttons, radio inputs. So we have two options here. So this array can be created dynamically. For the demonstration purpose, I am keeping the option array in the top of our component. You can pass it down from the parent component or get it from anywhere else. So this radio component also uses the controller uh, object that is exported on uh, controller from our React hook form and inside this controller as usual we have a render function we pass the name and control name and controller down the uh, controller object and is in this render function we create our radio so understand one thing that inside the render function we are rendering the whole thing here so the all of the radio components are going inside this and uh, here is an extra thing to show the error messages for validation errors or that kind of stuff so we are done with our input text and input radio now let's see how we can use our date component so working with date component in material ui is a little bit tricky we have to have some extra additional libraries first one is date io date fns another one is material ui pickers and we have to have another library that is called oh, let me show you in the package.json file that is called date fns so these three extra libraries are needed to be installed you already should know this if you are using material ui uh, if you are using any other library then we don't need to have this at least for anti design and semantic ui the rest is almost same we have a special wrapper here for uh, material ui pickers and uh, underneath this similarly we have a controller component we have a render function a keyboard date picker we can use time picker or whatever and uh, in this field we are destructuring our field so inside this we have our own change and value so they will be automatically assigned to the desired properties here so this is our date component uh, let me show you another component it is uh, our input slider component so slider means uh, this one we can uh, increase and decrease the value here so this slider component have a special handle change function here I don't know the default on change didn't work properly so I had to create my own handle change function and uh, you can see here that this on change property is assigned to handle change uh, I have to do it manually we can't extract the field from here and also this value is coming from our uh, local state so that is another thing you need to keep in mind the final one is our checkbox component this checkbox component is the most tricky one uh, in this checkbox uh, we also have some options uh, we need to pass down this and here we are uh, going over the options and rendering it one by one okay uh, these are all the things one important difference is in our radio component we are keeping the whole all of the radio options inside one controller but for our checkboxes we need to have each individual options inside each controller so if we have three options we need to have three controllers because in material UI each checkbox component is considered as an individual component individual independent component so in order to control their state we also have to do some stuff here we have to uh, maintain the state manually inside the component so that is another thing you need to keep in mind the final one uh, is going to be our drop down component this is exactly like our radio component we have some options uh, and inside the controller we are rendering all the options here so finally to hook it up 
let's see how we have hooked, hooked up all of these components we have hooked up this in our form demo demo uh, first we are defining our interface this is this project is done with typescript you can do uh, whatever library you want to use uh, javascript or uh, typescript but i am prefer i prefer typescript so i have used here i have provided some default values here you can see in the form demo first we are using this use form hook from the material ui and getting the methods here and we are also extracting out two functions handle submit and reset handle submit handles the submit functionality when you click in a button it will give you the all of the form data and reset will reset the form this is pretty self-explanatory you can see here that our form component is very small because we are reusing all of our components it is a very good practice to use and adopt uh, we are using here uh, a provider uh, you can see we all know that react uses context so this is our provider and inside each of the component we can see that we are getting the control from the context so this is the purpose of this provider we pass all the methods inside this provider as a value and all of the components are being used here you have two buttons one is for on submit and one is for resetting so let's see this uh, in action and also i want to remind you one thing once again that all of the codes can be found in, in this github repository i'll link it in the description so this is our form we can uh, change this and play with this and whenever we submit we can see that uh, all the values are uh, given here so if we change it so some other input if we submit it then we can see that it changes to some other input so all of the uh, values are given back as an object so that's it mm, thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this goodbye